why is it so hard for us to step back? Take a break. Pause and then take a look at the things that we're doing. I don't know about you, but it takes me a while when I decide to take a break to get to a mental spa place, space um, where I'm actually calm, where calmness has settled. Especially after a very busy time, a, a time where I've been doing a lot of things, checking a lot of boxes. It takes me quite some time before I can actually enjoy doing what feels like nothing. And I know that doing what feels like nothing is important. It's like with athletes, with professional athletes, they will tell you that rest is an important part of their training regime. When you're training for a marathon, for example, uh, it doesn't work when you train hard, run hard, run long distances up until the day before you have to run that race. I'm not a marathon runner, but I, s I seem to remember that uh, I think it's the week or maybe even two weeks before um, the actual race, they stop training in the sense of running a lot. They dial that way back and they rest a lot. So why don't we? Why do we, why do my, the people I work with continue to go on that hamster wheel, on that, tread, on that treadmill of doing, 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 of making sure everything gets done, of problem solving and whatever else. And then when they have to admit that they know they need a break, they need to step back from whatever it is they're doing and just take inventory you could call it, of the way they're living, the way they're working, the way their business is going, whatever. Um, why is that so hard? Why does that feel like you're doing nothing? Why is that... Why is that... Um, why does guilt come into play? And I guess it's because we're so, so programmed to always do something, to always be moving ahead, especially um, in Western society. I, don't, I can't speak for any other, but in Western society, we seem to always have to do things. And when you do, when you just sit and enjoy sitting there and being quiet and having calm settle in when you've not actually made space for that somebody may come up and, w and ask you why you're doing nothing i know it was for me growing up that was the case sometimes even reading a book would be considered doing nothing And because we're so good at doing and we're going on that hamster wheel, on the treadmill all the time, it takes our brains a, wh a while to, um, to get to that place of calmness, to get all of that stuff out of our heads and find quiet. Now, for me, it's really helpful to go into the mountains when I need that. It's really helpful to go into nature, but for me, mountains especially, because mountains, it's not just nature, it's just, it, it's their largesse, their majesticness. Is that a word? Majesticness? If not, I just invented it. 
their majesticness adds another dimension to the whole thing. It, it reminds us, it reminds me of the fact that um, that whatever it is that I'm dealing with in the larger scheme of things is not as big a problem as I thought it was. And at the same time, hiking up a mountain and, and coming to a summit or a ridge and looking back down to see what heights I've conquered, it also reminds me of what I'm capable of, of how much I'm capable of. And that goes for the people I work with as well. That goes for the people that I bring into the mountains as well. They may think they might not be able to reach that summit or reach that ridge. But when they do, because I've not had somebody yet that wasn't able to get to that point where they where they experience that it's almost like a high of getting to um, that place where you actually feel like bloody hell if I can do this if I can conquer this altitude if I can reach this summit this ridge this place I'm capable of so much And it takes, it takes a couple of days to get all that stuff out of our heads and just allow our minds to rest. Now for some people that may be in another part of nature, not everybody is as passionate about mountains as I am. But I do, like I said, think that the mountains and the fact that you can go up high and look down on life it does add a dimension to it that you get nowhere else but wherever you find rest wherever you go to find rest it's important to do that to do that because it's impossible I believe I know it is impossible to look at whatever it is that you're doing, analyze what it is that you're doing, decide whether or not you're doing the right things, and if not, make the necessary changes when you remain on that hamster wheel. How can you possibly see what it is that you're doing when you're just going when you go, 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 go to keep that treadmill going. You have to step off it. You have to step back. You have to create space to rest. To be able to see. And then take action. So if you've not taken rest for a while. I invite you to do that. I invite you to create the time and space to rest and to let everything that is causing you stress, everything that you have to do or you think you have to do, just let that be for a while and give yourself a break. Take time out, whatever you want to call it. Be like a professional athlete um, that is going up for a for a race or a match or whatever it is because rest is part of what we need to be able to live life without burning out As always, go there greatly. Bye-bye.